Hello, we're now going to talk about content limitations and also more generally how the availability of information can affect us presenting it. So first of all, content limitations. Let's break apart these two words. So content is the information we are presenting. So the information we are sharing, giving to other people. And limitation is something we must keep to. So limitation being some restriction, thinking way back to LO1, look at user constraints. Effectively, limitation is the same idea as a constraint. We can't break it. We are limited to some, some limitation. So for example, you might be limited in your presentation in terms of say a word limit or a page limit or a slide limit. So often if you are submitting work to say, so say coursework or at university, there'll be some limit on your word count. In a similar sense, maybe there's only a limited amount of time to actually do a presentation. So maybe there are only 15 slides you are allowed to make. Clearly that's going to affect how you are presenting it because you need to cram your information to a limit. Another content limitation may be the fact that there exists a house style for your organisation. So a house style is effectively the colours and fonts and the general presentation which is consistent across all of the organisation. So for example, BBC News is well known for having a sort of red and white theme. They use the same font on all of their pages. They've got the same logo for BBC, the sort of three black boxes. If you were to, say, create a Twitter account to also share information, clearly you're not going to suddenly have a green logo or change the font or change the name. You're going to try and be consistent because you're limited by the house style which exists. The third example is related to location, which we talk about quite a lot regarding availability. But often you're limited as someone presenting information by various different geographical restrictions. So for example here, sticking to BBC, if you're accessing your BBC iPlayer to watch TV programmes from the BBC, and if you're outside of the UK, you'll get a message like this, saying that they're only available inside of the UK, which means you can't go to America or to Australia and try and watch BBC programmes because there is a geographical restriction on those programmes, they can only be available inside the UK. And this is called geo-blocking. So because of this content limitation, you know that if you are making a programme for the BBC, it can only be viewed inside the UK. Another factor relevant to you presenting information is how available your information is. So some information is available to be used pretty much in real time. Now real time means at the moment, so it's occurring in real time. And in this case, the information is presented pretty much immediately after it has been collected. So we collect some data, we process it to make it information, and with real-time information, that is then presented straight away after it has been processed. So for example, weather is a good example of real-time data being used because a live forecast is collecting data via sensors across the country to see what the wind speed is and see if it's raining and so on. This will be processed to determine things like the wind speed and how much it's raining and then it'll be released on a live weather map like this. So amazingly, in the UK, it's not raining anywhere, but you can see in the sea, it's raining a bit and the wind in going different directions as well. So it's collecting it, it's processing it really, really fast, and then releasing it straight away so the information is real time. In a similar sense, travel is also a good example of where real time information is used. This is a live, as I record it, map of London and planes landing and taking off from Heathrow Airport. Sensors will be dotted about the country, they can read the information being emitted from the planes and determine where they are located. Again, processing is done really, really quickly and it's presented pretty much in real time. And the third example is traffic. So this is from Google Maps from Liverpool. I was looking at the traffic from Liverpool to, I think, Manchester. And if you zoom in, often it will now show you where it's heavier traffic. So people on their phones on Google Maps can record how fast they're moving. Google can process how fast they're moving. If they're moving slowly, they can assume they are stuck in traffic and you'll get like a red or orange section of your road. Perhaps if you're really stuck for time, you might skip the traffic section to try and avoid it. Again, there's no point if this wasn't real time, right? If you're showing the traffic from four days ago, it may not be relevant. So really real time information can't be delayed. It should be released as soon as you can. Let's talk a little bit more about delays then, because just to recap, we are collecting data, we are processing the data to make it information, and then we are wanting to present the data. Now, 
if there is a delay, if there is some too much time taken at one of those steps, the entire process will be slowed down. So for example, if there's a processing delay, if it's taking a while to process your information, your data, sorry, it might take, it might mean by the time you have presented it, your data is outdated. So for example, going back to travel, this is a live arrivals at London King's Cross, a station in London. And you can see certain trains being early, some are on time and one's late. They're in terms of minutes, right? So if you are, if it's taking 10 minutes to process the data, the Leeds train has already arrived. And so it's not very useful to anyone. The delay is too much of an issue. However, in some cases, actually, having real-time information is not that important. A delay might actually be better than a loss of accuracy. So for example, people often complain about how results day, where they get their results from their exam, is usually at least a month over, a month later than their last exams. You might sit your exam in May and get your results in August. Now that delay might not happen, right? You could hire, say, 50,000 examiners and they mark it the day after your exam and release it straight away. But actually, it might be better, or I would suggest it's much better, to wait and take your time and make sure all of the results are accurate. So real-time information is really important in some cases, but not so much in others. There is often a trade-off between accuracy and minimizing the delay. Let's end by talking about how location can affect availability of information. So the physical location is where you are literally located as you are accessing information, or trying to at least. And this is gonna be relevant for how you can present the information, right? Because if you are, say, as we talked about already, living in the Shetland Islands where there may not be much internet or any internet, as a presenter, you can't really get information to them via email or via social media, possibly, right? So you'd have to consider how you can present it. We talked already today about geoblocking and how certain websites will restrict access to people from various locations. This is also a factor. This is an American website unavailable to Europe because of uh, the GDPR legislation. If I was in America, I could access this, but I'm not, so I can't. It means the availability of the information has been affected based on my location. It's not only the physical location which is relevant, also the virtual location of your information will also determine who can access it. So for example, you might be making a social media account for your business, but most social media allow you to make it private, and so only so many people can view the information you are tweeting, say, in this case, right? So that's going to limit who can view it because it's sort of located in a private area. In a similar sense, if you're trying to read an article, maybe which isn't blocked totally, often it will now prompt you, many websites, to subscribe or log in before you can view the information. That affects your availability, right? It's available, but only via um, going to a special members-only location.